here's what we're here today for, to teach people how to live victoriously. So turn to your neighbor, be, hey, with hands lifted, that's okay. Say, I'm ready to be victorious. I'm ready to be victorious. Now, you become victorious by taking information and acting on it. Knowing it isn't enough. So, why you got your hands up, pull them in front of you and say, hands, hands. You, have you have the ability, the power of God on your inside, God. to lay yourselves on somebody and see them healed. Hands, you can wave at people. Hands, you can feed people. Just get busy doing it, okay? Everybody wave them. Everybody clap. Now, I did that and instructed you and you responded. But let me tell you, the Holy Ghost will do that every day if you'll pay attention. The Holy Spirit of God will tell you, clap your hands. Put a smile on your face. Lay hands on somebody. Give food to somebody. The Holy Ghost is smarter than you think and will make you look smarter than you are. Be happy for yourself. You may not have been in a smart, born in a smart family. I mean, I was raised in South Georgia, and we had some different relatives. You know what I mean? Oh, it's Uncle Fred. Oh, let's not. <laughs> you had relatives. How many of y'all had some flaky relatives? How many of you are not going to raise your hand no matter what I say? Okay. But it's that way. We, you have to teach people to live victorious. It's strange that you have to teach people even to be happy because we're so used to circumstances deciding if we're happy. Not in this place. We decide with our words and with our heart. Amen. Father, we thank you for the presence, your presence here right now. And more than that, we thank you that you have a plan for us today. And as you've given me part of the plan and you've given the Holy Spirit the unction to help us, we're going we're gonna to believe God for increase in every area. We're going to believe God for wisdom. We're going to believe God for favor. We're going to believe God for increase, wholeness in our body, and boldness in our lips. Amen. Now, before you're seated, reach down. And this time, lift your Bible up. Lift up your iPad, whatever you got. And I want you to do something. I, I was going to play you a song, but because of time, I'm, I'm just not going to play it. But I'm going to give you some lyrics on a song. This is a precious book. Amen. 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 God, come on, need better amen than that, huh? Amen. What's the point? I'm standing. <laughs> Hold your Bible close. Take your Bible and hug on it. I mean, this is real. Of all the books in the world, this one has the ability to transform completely, forever, eternally your life. It's so important the scripture calls Jesus the Word. This is the Word of God. We cannot take it lightly and we cannot just think, oh well, how long are you going to preach about the Word today? Forget it. Go ahead and get in the car. Hello? I want to share some things with you today. Uh, you know, I'm leaving town so I can leave and y'all deal with it, okay? <laughs> no, not like that. But I, I really am aggravated in my spirit over the culture we're in today. And that won't change a thing, my aggravation. But if I can help motivate all of us to fight the battle, things will change. Some of you are getting at the age you want to give up. Quit it. Forget that idea. Amen? Now, you're holding the Bible. This is what Mike Murdoch's saying. I love sitting at your feet. I love hearing what you say. I love knowing all your desires. And I'm so pleased to obey. I love sitting. You want to sit at Jesus' feet? Open it up. Hey, Jesus. Oh, man. Oh, those are colored pages. Look at there. Man, all over the... Oh, man, notes in every page. Oh, there's a check in that one. Wait a minute. I missed that one. <laughs> Go back. 
Better not let you on the end. <laughs> Somebody put a jacket there. Oh, my gracious. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Where did he go? Oh, it's to my mother from my cousin. A million dollar check. No, it is. From, from my cousin Paul. Hallelujah. I love sitting at his feet. The next part of the verse says, Your favor is like a sunrise. Driving all my nights away, I love sitting at your feet every single day. Okay, you can be seated. All right, praise God. Thank you, Father, that you're working in our midst today. Amen. Are you glad you came to church this morning? I am too. I, I want to commend you. It's a good deal when you can get out of bed. You want to be a success and be victorious? Learn to do one thing. Get up and make the bed. And I don't mean lay back on it when you made it, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. We need to spend more time in the Word and seeing things happening. And listening and obeying. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Amen? God so loved the Word so much, He called Himself the Word. It says in Revelation 19, 13, He was clothed with a vesture, dipped in blood, and His name is called the Word of God. Hallelujah. I thank God for this past week. Andrew was here, and thank you, Miss Leba. Oh, she's... Uh, stepped out for a moment but you need to go back if you didn't see it you need to see Wednesday night because we talked about what I'm going to partially what I'm talking about today the battle that the Mowbray family had and has conquered hallelujah and there were two sides of that battle there was Miss Leba's side the family side so to speak there was the husband the head of the house side he had a side of the battle to fight too hallelujah but the big deal is they won Hallelujah. Be happy for this family. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I told Andrew Wednesday night in setting part of the message up in, in his interview that if we want to be victorious, we have to prepare for battles by praising God every day. And my encouragement to you to join me every morning is to get up yourself and praise God and join me if you'd like to. I mean, obviously, I don't have a handle on everything God's doing, but I got a piece for the life of this church. And if you know what my heart's about, maybe we can flow better together. Amen? And I preach more during the week than I do on Sundays sometimes. Uh, honestly, I spend more time in preparation. And then I do one thing. I get up and say, okay, Holy Ghost, I studied. I'll stay up, you know, to about 9.30 or 10 and study. And then I'm in bed. I... I get up at 4.40 or, or 4.44. Or, uh, last night, I think I went to bed at 11.11 11 and got up at 4.44. <laughs> I have no idea why I'm telling you that. But, <laughs> but I'm just saying, it's good to praise God daily. If you don't know how to praise God, you're not going to like heaven. Do you know that? Amen. And you're going to go, I, they're not, I don't know that song. Well, the songs up there aren't necessarily all written on earth. They're written up there too. There's a whole choir up there been practicing for years. Amen. You ought to be happy to go though, when we go. And I don't think God's getting a busload of us up today. I think we've got some things to do here. Amen. <laughs> Secondly, you ought to prepare for, uh, for battles by receiving His Word daily. You've got to have the bullet in you. You've got to have the training, the ammunition to tell the enemy no. Glory to God. Say amen to that. Look at Ephesians 6.10. Finally, my brethren, read it with me. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Come on. Read it with me out loud. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Do you understand? Without that armor, you will not stand. And it has to do not so much in physical, I got armor on myself, but it has to do with what God has put in your heart. The next verse says, We wrestle, read it with me, not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The battle never ends. 
Now, you will, we will win a victorious part and move on. But believe you me, the enemy hasn't left the earth yet. But there's a day coming. He's going to be put away forever and ever and ever and ever. Amen? Amen. Ephesians 6, 13. Let's say it with it. Come on. Wherefore, take up to you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Would you declare, yes or no, is this an evil day we're living in? It's a, none of us have seen this kind of day. Now, World War I, they had evil days. I mean, Civil War, they had evil days. Revolution, we had good evil days. We got away from, you know, that other dragon over there. And anyway, but World War II came. But, you know, there were a lot of sicknesses and pandemics that came. In the 1900s, uh, right before and after World War I, there were all kinds of things that went on. World War II comes along, and we got all, and that was a four, five year, six year stint of things going on, you know? And then we had this wonderful, crazy thing called the Jesus Res Revolution that came, but it was the counterproductive thing. It was trying to get rid of the love generation, where all of a sudden all the barriers were taken down about your body. And that's really when uh, um, the young lady uh, who came against the Bible being in the church or prayer in the church, what was her name? Uh, uh, O'Hara, yeah. Uh, what was her first name? Madeline. Madeline. Well, bless her heart. But she succeeded, one person, in getting the Bible out of school, getting prayer out of school. But see, we're still in a battle over things like that. But it says, 14th verse, stand therefore. You've got to learn to stand. I know you get tired. You get, I think, when's it going to get over again? When's it going to give up? Well, i got some answers for us today, okay? We need to get our focus on the fact that we've got a job to get done. And the job that we've got to get done, well, let me get my notes back here, is that we are not to allow anything about any other attention to take our focus off the real reason we're here. Amen? The real reason we're here is simply this, that you and I, we have to work on the harvest that God's given us the assignment about. God has, His last command is our first place of obedience. He said, go. Amen? The harvest is still what His heart is about. And there's a battle to get the harvest. There's a battle out before us. And we have to decide that we want to stay focused on what God's doing. Well, we are, but we got to still work. You don't know how hard we have to work. Yeah, I do. We've all had to do all of that. But staying focused, it is about the harvest. There are people that are going to go for sure to hell if we don't do our job. Yeah, but we're fighting this other cultural battle. Yeah, and that's what I want to talk about today. Fighting the cultural battle that's trying to get rid of Christianity. we got to stay, keep the harvest on our mind. Say, I'm not ashamed, I'm not ashamed. of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. I am not ashamed. Are you? Ashamed. Therefore, publicly, I don't hide. I let it be known. You know, people even still in this church occasionally complain, Pastor, why do you have them shades and all that? That's so silly. No, it isn't. I'm telling you, I've given even this week lots of these away. Now, I started to say tons, but not. I've given quite a few away. In some places I've gone, I've had two pair with me, given them away, go to the car, get another pair, and give them away again. And stand there and talk and pray with people. What a joy just a little, little tool is. Well, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I know that you have to prepare to go out there and be ready to answer any kind of question they might have. But I'm of the opinion right now, we're hiding behind, well, the pandemic. You know, we have to be, we have to be prudent and careful. I understand, but there's a bigger pandemic than that physical virus thing. It's called sin. It'll definitely kill you. Amen? And we have to re decide that, you know what? We're going to do what God told us to do. 
Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Watch this. And in the message, you're going to like several of the, well, you're going to like all the verses, but <laughs> here's where we are. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Since God has so generously let us in on what he's doing, we're not about to throw up our hands and walk off the job just because we run into occasional hard times. Pastor, i got to talk to you. You just don't know. I had four flat tires this week, and I just don't know what to do. The devil's on my back. Bless his holy name. I, I, you know, no. Don't let that trivial stuff get your attention. That's right. Now, how many of you know there's a mandate about masks and mandates about this? Well, I never thought I'd see it in the Bible, but look at this. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2. We, we refuse to wear a mask. <laughs> oh, come on. Some of you are going, that ain't funny. Your wood's wet. <laughs> we refuse to wear a mask and play games. We don't maneuver and manipulate behind the scenes, and we don't twist God's Word to match what we think it ought to be. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> whoop, whoop, back up there. We refuse to wear masks. Rather, we keep everything we do and say out in the open. Here it is. The whole truth should be on display anytime anybody sees you. You walk into a room, you ought to brighten it up. Some people walk in a room, and it gets darker. Some people brighten a room when they leave. <laughs> Ever been around people like that? Oh, brother. <laughs> the whole truth, we keep it on display so that those who can see and judge for themselves about the presence of God. If our message is obscure to anyone, it's not because we're holding back. Promise yourself you will not hold back this week. You're going to be out of your way to let people know why you're doing what you're doing. Why you're a believing believer. Why there's a, a presence of God and we worship God. No, it's because uh, these people are looking or going the wrong way and they refuse to give it any serious attention. All they have eyes for is fashionable God of darkness. They think he can give them what they want what they want, and that they won't have to bother believing a truth they can't see. You see, that's why right now the government we're living under has gotten over into one of the left's biggest issues. Let's just give everybody everything. They don't have to use faith. They don't have to work. They don't have to get out of bed or make the bed. All they got to do is breathe. No, they don't pay taxes. A lot of them, they skip on that, right? But you see, you and I, we, we know that it's a good thing to work. Work as long as you can. Don't retire. Right. Refire. Yes. Keep moving forward. Those folks are stone blind to the day spring brightness of the message that shines with Christ, who gives us the best picture of what God will we'll ever get from God. How many of y'all been watching the series, the, the Chosen? It's good. Have you seen it? I talked about it. Oh, yeah, I know. But I mean, I, I just want to make my two cents in on it. Well, what Jesus says is a good deal. Amen? So look at this. We were in 2 Corinthians. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. Here's the way the world is right now. And I'm setting this to, so I can talk about some very desperate times we're in right now. The world is unprincipled, yes or no? Yes. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog thing out there right now, right? Yes. What do you mean I can't want to be like... If I, what do you mean? It's a dog-eat-dog. -dog. The world doesn't play fair. They don't even fight fair, right? right? You can call them out on something. Well, what do you think you... In fact, we were called out in the last couple of weeks. What do you mean you have to have church? We need to paint the parking lot. Well, you're painting it on Sunday. That don't, that don't fit with me. Hello? Well, can't y'all cancel church? No. What, what do you think we are here? <laughs> you know? Well, couldn't y'all meet across the street? No. 
We're paying you more money than we want to pay you to be here. <laughs> but we don't live or fight our battles that way. Never have and we never will. We just go ahead and forward with God. Amen. The tools of our trade aren't for marketing and manipulating, but they are for, watch this, what we got in our mouth, what's on our inside, is for demolishing the, that entire massively corrupt culture. Amen. That culture out before us is corrupt. They're pressing the wrong way. We use our powerful God tools for smashing warped philosophies, tearing down barriers erected against the truth of God, fitting every loose thought. They have loose thoughts going all the time out there. And emotions and impulse into the structure of a life shaped by Christ. Our tools are ready at hand for doing what? Clearing the ground and making room, the pathway for God to come and do what He does. The ground of obstruction, building lives into obedience. Now, I... For one, as a believer, will never apologize for being a Christian. Could you say that? Amen. Say it out of your mouth right now. I will never apologize for being a Christian. Can I tell you something, those of you watching? There's going to be a time coming in the next weeks and months. You may have that chance. There's pressure coming now. And in this next, you know, two to three months, and it could come sooner, there's going to be a lot of pressure mandates because of science. I, uh, a couple of weeks ago, found this book uh, called The Christian Left, and it's got a sickle and a, you know, hammer there. But it's how the liberal thought process has tried to, it says hijack the church, but I, I just say they haven't hijacked it. They're trying real bad. It's by Lucas Miles. I'm still reading it, but I encourage you about it because you need to get some arsenal, I mean, some bullets in your gun. You need to be prepared for what's going on right now. Now, there is a cancel Christianity culture. Is that right? Yes, Have you felt it? Yes, well, you can't be quiet about it. Right. Well, what are we going to do, Pastor? We haven't church. Isn't that enough? No! This is the prep ground for the battle. Yes, Glory to God. Yes. And we have to speak life words to our culture. We can't curse the culture and think it'll change. We have to help the culture back to point north, compass going north. We have to help them see that God has a plan and none of his plans have defeat. We have to help them. They're stupid. Hello? Hello? And if we're going to go into battle, there's got to be some leadership. And the Holy Ghost, number one, is your leader. Number two, having a pastor who you trust, who, who you believe, yes, he's going to guide us, he's going to help us. That's, a reason, that's your responsibility, your choice to do that. Now, thinking of a battle and, and leadership, how many of y'all remember the story of David and Goliath? Yes. Amen? Amen? Well, here's the deal. David went out to see his brothers. And mind you, he was a 16, 17-year-old kid. He was not king. They didn't want him around anywhere. But he goes out to take some uh, uh, bacon, lettuce, tomato sandwiches, I suppose, out to the boys. Or peanut butter and jelly. Or uh, some pierogi. I know. I said that for that reason. Or some pierogies or something. Uh, hey, out, out there. He went out there. And they're standing around. But do you know why they were standing around and had been for days? They had this battle going on that we're supposed to be doing. But, you know, the Philistines came up with an idea. I'm going to tell you, the culture is going to come up with an idea the same way. The, the Philistines came up with this idea. Why don't we just stand here and we'll bring one of our guys. You bring one of your guys. And whoever wants to come out and fight... We'll let, we'll let the battle go that way. Can I tell you something? The culture is trying to get that for every one of us right now. They're trying to get you to compromise on how we win battles. You never go into a battle with their rules. You never go into negotiation with their rules. You go with what God told you to do. Now, was there a king at the time when this battle was going on? 
What was his name? Saul. Saul. Do you know Saul was a big fella too? You can read Samuel, 1 Samuel, that he was taller than most everybody else. He was a half a head or bigger, you know, like two feet taller than everybody else around him. He stood out. He got chosen. He didn't have the moral compass in him that he should have had to be a king, but he got chosen king. But he agreed to this arrangement, and in agreeing to the arrangement, you know what happened? They all compromised, and they stood around and waited and waited and waited. And King, rather than going there and encouraging them, he went and hid in the, hid in the tent. And then he heard this commotion. This guy's out here wanting to go beat up on Goliath. And every day Goliath came out, hey, you going to send somebody over? Come on. Let's, just two of us. We'll fight it out, and we'll see who wins. Well, duh, I ain't going out there with that kind of giant up there. Except I got the spirit of David on me and know what's what's what going on. So Saul hid back. He could have gone. He should have gone, but he didn't. And you and I can't be in that situation. We've got to be like David. Hey, I've been in a battle before. I fought a bear. Yeah. I fought a lion. Yeah. I, I went ahead and conquered those. And is there not a cause? This uncircumcised Philistine. In other words, do you recognize that the culture we're fighting against is uncircumcised? They don't have a clue about God. We need to fight that spirit. Amen? The shepherd boy came. And, but King Saul should have, could have, but David did it. David decided, I'm not going to wear anything else but what I know. And that's the wonderful thing about you right now. God doesn't need you to have my armor, Miss Cheryl's armor. He needs you just to take your little five little rocks. And he took five because he found out that Goliath had four other brothers, just in case. You know? He took something he knew to do. And it, and it was a rock that was so smooth that if it sailed through, and it was probably about... 40, 50 miles an hour that it sailed through the air out of this you know, sling he had. And he took that rock, confronted Goliath, and that rock didn't hit the man's knee, didn't hit him in the tummy, didn't hit him over here. It hit him right up here. And I don't care how tall you are, that cavity up there is subject to a 60 mile an hour rock coming your way of cracking it open. And that's how Goliath went down. Now, the compromise for every one of us is the battle would have gone all kinds of ways, but the, the thing that happened was that Israel was paralyzed. They could not move. And I believe Christians are getting that way now. What are we going to do? Just stay in the house? Let's get some prep food. We'll just wait it out. No! We, we have to do something. We have to say, come on. We have to say something and move forward. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. I think it's time for us to look at some ideas. And I just want to give you a few because I, I appreciate David stepping up and doing what he did. And what he basically did, he took the word of God that he knew, that he had won on. Do you have a word down in you where you've won battles? I remember when Miss Cheryl laid hands on me and, and others had laid hands on me and we got through asthma. I never had, that was a battle we won. I never had asthma since. How, have you got some wins? The Mowbray family's got a win. The Columbus family's got a win. Tammy and Bob got wins. They, they've got some wins. You can't talk them out of it. Oh, I, I, hey, hey. How about you? You got a win? Well, that's what you need. You need to take it. Now, I saw this statement the other day, and I thought I'd just throw it out here. It's not mine, but I'm going to use it. Okay? Let me get this straight. There's a political party that supports abortion over life, illegals over its own citizens, refugees over its homeless veterans, and they're going to lecture us on mor morals? I don't think so, Cupcake. There is a powerful message out there by the left right now that they are right and you are wrong. What are you going to do about it? 
Well, we're going to speak to it. That's one thing for sure. Amen. We have to. God chose you and I. And more than that, he has uh, ordained us that we should go forth. Now, let me slide down to a couple of places here. I want to help you out here. I'll go right through here. Here we go. Uh, Philippians 3.14. Say it with me. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in Christ. In Christ Jesus. That's where we've got to be. We've got to stand and say, you know what? I'm not being distracted. I'm going to press. But the first way you're going to press is get your suit on, but get the word of God coming out of your mouth in a stronger way. Declare. Don't give in to any, any dilution or any compromise. Amen? So we press toward the mark of what? Victory. We're going to speak victory. We're going to declare victory in all of the things going on in our life. And I've got some things. I'll, I'll just say it this way. I reject the idea, the premise of certain things. I reject the idea that the church is shrinking and going to disappear. Well, the church is not significant anymore. We don't need the church, actually. We can just have house church and that will be more than enough. I reject it. I reject the idea that young people aren't hungry for God anymore. Do you see the young lady singing up here this morning? She's under 20. She is... Where'd she go? 17. <laughs> she's 17. <laughs> hey, she's already experiencing winning and doing things. I don't accept the idea that the enemy has won a cultural war and we might as well give in. I don't accept the idea that anybody can live any way in their body and call themselves a man or a woman when they're not. Amen. They can call themselves a pony or a whatever. You know, no. I don't accept any of that. Let me go over here. Here. I don't accept the premise that science has rendered the spiritual realm void or obsolete. I don't accept the premise that a pastor needs to wear himself out doing all the stuff that the family ought to be doing. Amen. Amen. I don't accept the premise that the church is boring. I don't accept the premise that today people are too sophisticated and rich to need church. Well, we, we are over that. We used to go at the first church, you know. I don't accept the premise that once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. Or once a child molester or adulterer or anything else. I still believe the blood of Jesus covers sin. I believe we can call on the name of Jesus. I believe we press into the things that God has for us. Amen. I still, I, I don't accept the premise that some people are just born with certain sexual proclivities and nothing could be done about it. Amen. You know, we had Mark um, here Nelson, some months ago, he had worked in the legislative branch and worked in the governor's office of the state of Florida and was a homosexual, but he got delivered. But he all but died in the middle of it in an operation that he was having, and uh, he refused to leave. Well, Miss Leba refused to leave a couple of weeks, months ago. I'm going to live. You need to refuse whatever's coming against you. You need to speak it out of your mouth. You have not. Now, if you leave, heaven's a gain. But you got work to do down here. Glory to God. Well, I don't know if I've started to stir you up a little bit or put you to sleep. But hallelujah. It's time the church stood up and acted like the church. Amen. Amen.